Okay, my name is Michael Bronner. I'm the grandson of Dr. Bronner from Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps and currently Vice President. And could you tell us about your range of products? Sure. Um, well, we have our liquid soaps. They're pure Castile, which means they're completely vegetable based and they're completely organic. The oils that we use in our soaps are organic. Um, we have a line of bar soaps as well, organic lotions, lip balms, and body balms, and also a line of organic snack bars made with organic hemp nuts, almonds, and fruits. And uh, this is true confessions. I've been using your products since the 70s, so uh, I'm sort of convinced. And um, you do some interesting things with sourcing in terms of where you get your ingredients from. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, up until about three years ago, we sourced our ingredients all conventional, um, from conventional farmers, either in the U.S. or abroad. And starting three years ago, we decided to convert all of our oils to organic, which meant that we kind of had to uh, scour the globe to find places where they made these ingredients organically. Since then, we've kind of realized that when you're sourcing things organically, um, you're doing a lot of great things for the environment, but not always are you doing great things for the farmer. And there's so many middlemen that often those middlemen are the ones taking the profits and the farmers are still basically doing uh, bare substance farming. So we've decided in the last six months to source over 95% of our agricultural inputs, all of our oils, fair trade, which means that the farmer is not at the whim of the market, that he can actually grow his grow his, his crops, uh, make the oils out of those crops, and recover his investment, plus uh, make a little bit more that, uh, more that he can live on. And also, the, um, we, ha we have a, a fair trade premium that's put on top of that, roughly 10%. And what happens with that is that goes into a community fund, and that community fund then in turn uh, helps with roads, with schools, with hospitals, kind of brings those necessities to uh, the farmers who need it most. So it gets more like community development rather than just a company. A absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the big things about fair trade, it's a, it's a wonderful concept, but you also have to uh, be realistic about it. And if you can imagine um, uh, a big group of farmers, and they're all making organic peppermint oil. And if you buy fair trade oil from like only 10% of those farmers, and you're, you know, you're, you're giving them a better price, well, there's a chance that you might create jealousies with the other 90%. So the importance is actually to benefit everyone, is, uh, you know, yeah, um, give the, those farmers what they need, you know, and, and a little bit of premium so they can, um, you know, they can earn more from what they're selling, but also uh, invest in things that benefits the whole group, and so everybody can be proud and, and take part in what fair trade has to offer. And I hear that you're sourcing from some somewhat unconventional places like Palestine. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, exactly. Um, we're sourcing our olive oil from both Palestine and Israel. Um, Adam Eidinger has just uh, come back from doing a documentary there, which I'm uh, very excited to hear more about. Um, but, you know, essentially we're really trying to kind of get beyond the conflict, really to the people. Um, and, um, you know, uh, basically bring, um, bring what fair trade has to offer to people in that region that need it as well. And you folks are one of the partner organizations in the Green Festival. Could you say something about why you find that beneficial to your company? Well, basically the Green Festival supports um, kind of the core of what we believe in, which is uh, making products that are uh, beneficial not only for people, but for the environment as well. And, you know, it, it's a great network of companies that, you know, when we come here, we feel part of the community. Uh, it's very much the grassroots of what uh, organic natural products always has been. And, you know, in, in, in the past, as natural products has become more mainstream, which is, which is great that, you know, more and more people are exposed to it. It's kind of nice sometimes to come back and, and be with the people and be with the businesses that, that really started it for, for more than just, a, a, you know, a way to make money for, um, you know, reasons of uh, helping out the environment and people. And what do you think about the idea of making the Green Festival permanent into a Green Mart that would be an eco mall in every city? Well, I think you can, I mean, if you come here and it's, you know, it's amazing. This is what the first year that you're actually having three days of the Green Festival. I think in the way in the beginning, was it a one day event? Or? 
the two-day event. It was a two-day event last year. Now it's a three-day event. I mean, I, I honestly think you can pretty much do this every single weekend in San Francisco and uh, have people are just going to be just as excited as, you, uh, as they are here at a once-a-year event, you know, four times, five times a month, you know, weekdays, weeknights. And are you folks seeing the market for your products grow? Absolutely. We grew by about 30% last year. We're growing by about 20% this year. Uh, it's just, you know, people, people are, are learning that uh, going organic is, you know, not only good for the environment, it's good for you. And you guys have also done some innovative stuff with your packaging. Could you talk about that a little? Sure. Um, basically, with our bottles of, of liquid soap, or liquid soap is our number one seller, uh, we've pioneered the use of 100% post-consumer recycled plastic, uh, resulting in no waste to the environment. And you're also active in the Hemp Industries Association. Could you talk a little bit about the hemp struggle? Uh, sure. You know, it's um, you know, it's one of those things. You jump ahead three feet, fall back one. You know, fall back two. But you just got to keep plugging away. And we are the number one users of hemp oil in the world with our with our liquid soap. Uh, we have a snack bar that's made with uh, organic hemp nuts, and we're really just trying to bring this fantastic organic. Uh, 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 agricultural commodity that can grow anywhere without any pesticides, um, almost any climate, and bring it down to the USA, bring it into California. You know, it's, it's great to support Canada as well, but you know, it'd be nice if we could get it up the street. And why do you think it is that it's still illegal to produce hemp in the United States? You know, it's misinformation, miseducation, and misconceptions. Um, basically, people. People assume that hemp is marijuana and nothing can convince them otherwise. Uh, and they, um, even though you know hemp is a, a far different crop, it's almost more, you confuse it probably more with bamboo than you would with marijuana. Uh, you still have a lot of drug warriors that are unfortunately running policy that uh, ironically are never confusing uh, people eating a poppy seed bagel with somebody smoking uh, heroin or opium. but. They do that with hemp and marijuana. And the best website for people to check out your products? Uh, www.drbronner.com. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, it's great talking.